Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. We have a brand new guest to the channel, Ms. Carolyn Dennis, which we're very excited and anticipatory of what God is going to put on her heart to share today. She is a prophet, and she has her own channel. And uh, one of our team members discovered her about a month ago, and I had the opportunity to speak with her, and we really liked what uh, we heard and her testimony, and more so we decided to bring her on, and she was gracious enough to come on our channel. So if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it does help us grow and hit that notification button so you get the customized views so you don't miss anything. As we always do with our brand new guests, I'm going to read their bio. So her bio is a very short and condensed one. Uh, Carolyn Dennis is the co-host of Declaring Your Destiny on YouTube. Her channel focuses on Bible studies, devotions, and messages received from God. Carolyn is married to Michael, her husband, for over 25 years, and they have a son named Daniel. Her family is chief priority within her life. Her professional life includes working as a probation officer in education for over 25 years. Carolyn is currently a professor of criminal justice at Liberty University. She has served in various capacities in her walk with the Lord, ranging from Bible study leader, an usher at her church, vacation Bible school teacher, office volunteer, and prayer warrior. Her passion and relationship with Christ is the driving force within her life. And we certainly resonate with that. So, Ms. Carolyn Dennis, Thank you for joining us on the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, John. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm very excited to come and uh, see what the Lord wants to bring. Absolutely. And, and again, we're honored to have you. Anytime that we can bring on uh, people of faith wholly in the subject is something that we aspire to do. And so, as I said earlier to you offline, our team uh, discovered you, particularly uh, John G., and uh, he was very impressed with what God was doing with you. And after I saw you, I could clearly see why. And um, some of my family members have watched your podcast and were always also encouraged. So there was there was confirmations left and right. So <clears throat> you could say that this this coming together was inevitable. So one of the things, Carolyn, that I first resonated with me about you is that you don't do a lot of uh, you know, research, you know, privately or personally, you don't read the news, you don't watch the mainstream news. This way, your message and your words are coming directly from the Lord as unabated from man as possible. And you talked a lot about Nassara, which our audience knows very, very well and knows the mechanics of it and what it entails and all of the ancillary benefits associated with it. Um, we interview um, fairly frequently a gentleman named Dr. Scott Young, a fellow brother and a Christian who's mm -hmm. dedicated a lot of his career to Nasara, So we're very, very aware of what it is. But I like the fact that you didn't know what it was, but you said that God said it was his. And I fully agree with that. In fact, one of the things we've said on our podcast and to our team is that Nasara, in human form, going back to the Bible, has smacks of Leviticus 25, 9 to 11, the proverbial debt jubilee, and sort of touches on the inferences of that. So I think that might be a good place to start. Can you touch on a little bit about the, the notes that you gave me and how God brought Nassari into your life and how you knew that it rang true for you? Okay, um, well, I heard about Nassara, and so I asked the father about Nassara. I think that um, someone in, had asked me in one of my chat comments uh, about Nassara. So I went to the father and I asked him in my prayer time about Nasara, and he gave me a word on July 6th, 2024, and this is what he said. And these are the words from, the, from God. Nasara is from me, and it is going to happen. This is all a part of my plan and to right the money bondage that has been placed on my children for centuries. Watch for the change in your debt. Expect it, believe for it, and soon you will see all of your debt wiped out in one day. This is my plan, and I show men and women of mine how to implement what I want in the earth. Nasara does not mean you will not have to pay for things or you will not have to work. The reset is to set you free from the financial slavery and bondage that you are in by your government. And then he goes on just a little bit with this. 
Some have already woke up to being debt free and soon you will as well. Remember, I gave man free will and I work through man. This is a plan devised by me, implemented through men to set you 100% free. So then he said, don't doubt and don't fear, but don't go crazy spending money either. Stay where you are, have faith, and let me work my plan. All will be well. I am Abba Father, and I take care of my children. So that's where that piece ended about Nasara that night when he gave me that. Mm. And for me, he said, believe it. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. And so I did research what Nasara was, and it is totally awesome. And I'm excited. As well, you should be. And yeah. I didn't tell you this, Carolyn, but when <clears throat> we talked offline, but some of my audience knows this is for your audience as well, respectively. Um, so I've been familiar with Nasara for at least five years. And I've been in this wealth transfer movement for 11, which is interesting because it's the number of agreements with God, as you know, right? Yes. So just so your audience knows, I do know one or two things about the word <laughs> and, and, and continuing to learn and grow every day, which is, which is fun, actually. Um, so the last five, five plus years, well, actually, I've, I've known probably, I'd say closer to seven, but I've been studying intensely for the last five since 2019, specifically. And so during that time, we've had uh, different friends, family members, uh, extended family members come to me and say, hey, John, my, my credit cards disappeared. My car note disappeared. My student loan, my medical debts, et cetera, et cetera, are gone. What's going on? I said, Nasara. Uh, one of our team members, I mentioned John G and I both physically saw in a text, a picture text that came in during 2020 in fact, it was four years ago, almost to the day, Carolyn, which is interesting. A military member friend received a bank statement from Wells Fargo, whereby it said on the memo in capital letters, N-E-S-A-R, and the A was X'd out, but we knew what that meant. And it was to the tune of a considerable amount of money that was put in this person's account. So there, in 2019, a lot of the Chase Bank branches went down and people's debts were automatically forgiven in that country. Um, <clears throat> Iceland, to give you some context, went against the International Monetary Fund, which is a cabal uh, organization, right, of the devil. They said, do not do any debt forgiveness. They did anyway. And they faced some, some light consequences, but they went through with it anyway. So this is to let your audience know what some of our audience knows, which is this has happened before. This is a precedent. Uh, there's a precedent, but now we're just doing it on a on a on a global scale. And the other yeah. thing I would encourage both my audience and yours is um, don't be concerned if it hasn't happened for you yet. Like we get a lot of comments about, well, I haven't received it, I haven't heard about it, blah 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 blah. Some of the complaining and groaning and the mm -hmm. humanist flesh that that happens. Um, I would liken it to the story in the Bible, as you know, where they had the field workers, right? Yes. And some have been there 15, 20 years, and then newbies came on a month later, and Jesus paid everybody the same. And the people that have been working there 15, 20 years were groaning, why are you paying them the same? And Jesus like, well, what's it to you? Right. So I would encourage everyone to not be worried about why someone else got it. You're going to get what you're supposed to get. What, you, what is yours is yours, to your point. Right. Exactly. How exciting. Yes. So I would say the big thing is to believe. You need to just have faith because God said it's going to happen and his timing is perfect for when it's going to happen for you. So, okay. hundred um, percent. The next thing I want to talk to you about is in your notes as well. Uh, and this is regards to silver and gold. We know Haggai 2, it says the gold and silver are mine among many verses, but yeah. apparently you got a prophetic word about that as well. So would you be so kind to share that please? Okay, um, let's see. I am looking at, are you looking at July 18th? Um, I am looking at August 8th. August 8th. And okay. You can do July 18th, that's fine. Okay, well, we'll start with July 18th and we then we can pick it up at, uh, at the other one. Okay, so 
on July 18th, let me get back, it moved. Um, the father said, September will have major events and tumults. My feast will be different for many this year and the markets will be taking off. The dollar will be escalating and things will be changing. September will have some great moments and gold and silver will flourish. It's time for the silver to explode and explode it will. Did you buy your silver yet? Get some fast while it's still low. They bought my son for 30 pieces of silver. Remember that number. Numbers are very important to me and I work all of the details out and I'm going to honor my son with the rise in silver. They shamed him when they betrayed him, but I am going to honor him. My son deserves all the praise. And then he goes on and he says, do you know him? And have you had taken time to get to know him? And he talks about that. So, and I was feeling the Holy Spirit all over that. I don't know if you could tell, John. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So then the other one, um, let's see, you said was um, August 8th. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, and that one I um, recorded today on my channel. So um, let me say, share that with you. Please. Silver is imploding now, which means going down a little bit, before the explosion that I'm going to make happen. It will not be man's doing, but mine hand is at work for all that I have told you that is coming to my earth. The silver and gold is mine, saith the Lord, and silver and gold are both going to be rising quite rapidly very, very soon. So fear not. This is a part of the wealth transference for some, but I have many ways that I'm going to transfer wealth from the wicked to my righteous children. Some will receive great inheritances, debts simply canceled, people giving away land, houses, and money, and more. So if you don't have silver or gold, I am still going to take care of you, my child. Wow. And he said inheritance is, and that was plural. It mm. just so some people are going to get more than one inheritance, but he said the silver and the gold is going to explode. And he has been saying September a lot lately. September, it's coming. Yes. Is it okay um, if I just chime in on one quick thing that you said? Yes. Yes. I wanted you to finish so that you got your whole point off. And thank you for that. That was great. Um, as you were sharing about the silver and make sure that, you know, to God's people that they get their silver, <clears throat> I feel like the Holy Spirit was saying to me, when you said 30 pieces of silver in the financial world, because you may or may not know, um, that has been a benchmark number of a lot of my subject matter experts that I interview have said that $30, when we get to $30, that's going to be the breakout point for silver. And we've seen it go above 31 to almost 32. And then they, right. the, the, the banks and the deep state try to slam it down, but that's only going to make it be like a slingshot come back even harder. You know, it's a yeah. resistance line will come back the other way. Um, so I just think it's really a powerful correlation between what the world deems in that number 30 to be important versus what God just told you the number 30 means. Yes. Yes. So I'm excited. So I don't know if he means 3,000, 30,000. I, I don't know what he means as far as that goes, but the numbers 30 is very symbolic. And like you said, it could be when it hits 30, which we know it hit it maybe a week or so ago, because I do check the silver. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit, not very much, but I do check it and it went to 30, but it then it came back down. So you're right. 
There's something about the number 30. Yeah, there's just something that came to me now. And, and this is, again, my audience is pretty aware of this. So ladies and gentlemen, just be patient because I'm talking to a brand new guest here. But for your audience who, again, I don't know where they are in their comprehension right. of things and how far along they are. So I'm speaking in generic terms. But um, our audience is pretty well aware that the importance of silver, other than the fact that it's holy God's money, first and foremost, from a human perspective, it governs the new economy with uh, artificial intelligence and robotics and manufacturing. We're going to have as part of Nassar all these new patents that are going to be coming out, right? Mm -hmm. One of them, which is MedBeds. And it's, I think 90% of it is comprised of silver. The robots will be over 90% silver. The chips in your car, uh, the computer screens, your iWatches, all that stuff is heavily encompassed and comprised in silver. So silver is definitely, um, if you know, if you had a certain amount of money that you had to work with, I would certainly recommend getting more, not a financial advisor, but would certainly recommend getting more silver than anything else for that reason. Right. And you recall that when Solomon was king, that, that silver was looked at as like stones on the, on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And so I, there's something about silver. Yeah. Yes. So it's the people's money and the gold was, as you know, the king's money. Right. But I, I do believe God is going to give his people a chance to get both and, and copper and other things. And you're absolutely right about what you said, because, you know, John G says this quite a bit. Um, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And that's exactly yes. what, to your point, um, what we see coming as well. Now, something I just want to touch on quickly. You talked about September being a breakout point. We know in the Bible, it's replete with history, right? Historical replication. As mm -hmm. Solomon said, nothing new under the sun, right? Right, he did. Well, same thing in our history in the world, in particular in God's country, America. Uh, if you recall, September of 2008, we had the bank bailout. Yes. We had interest rates. We had all that stuff. What we see coming, Carolyn, for your audience to know is we see that happening again, but on a much, much more rapid scale because 16 years ago, they were just kicking the can down the road and just ballooning the bubble, right? Mm -hmm. And they put it in a corner. There's nowhere to escape that bubble anymore because we've gone beyond the point of no return. Uh, you're you're going to see the car markets. You're going to see the housing markets, commercial real estate, everything. And the encouraging thing I, I wanted to get your take on was we believe in our camp that with this wealth transfer is really two key components. One, it's the financial but it's also the cost of things is going to go down 90 plus percent. So God's people will be able to take advantage of the savings as well. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. It, 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 God's people will be able to purchase things, maybe a dream home that they have want, desired because he wants to give his children the desires of their heart. So, but of course, the wealth transference, we can't forget the primary purpose of the wealth transference <clears throat> is to fund the gospel for Jesus. Right. So we, so he wants us to have some wonderful things in our life, but he also right. wants us to support the gospel because we are believing for the great being so harvest before Jesus comes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the purpose is to, like, like I was telling you offline, the late great Kim Clement said it best, you know, I want you to feed the lonely, the poor, the hungry, the needy. The yes. widows and the orphans yes. this is my desire so like you i do and i know many of our audience does want to interlock with god's desires to please him and serve him and as a byproduct it's not a quid pro quo like oh, if i do for god he's going to do for me he's going to do right. for us regardless but right. just imbuing yourself with his soul and his desire just makes you feel so much more purposeful and then by default these things come right so Absolutely. Absolutely. Because he, he gives us several methods of giving and he wants us to be generous. And he has said that in multiple messages that he has given me. And, you know, John, there's no better feeling than when you put some, something in somebody's hand that they yeah. need and you walk away and, mm -hmm. and you just and, and nobody knows you even did it. But that person and God, it is the greatest feeling in the world to be able to share something with somebody and so God wants us to just have a, a heart of giving and of love for people because that's who he is. He's yeah. a giver because he gave us Jesus, his son. 
Absolutely. I, mean, if, if, I think, Carolyn, if we could just get the first two commandments right, everything else would take care of itself. <laughs> no, that's the truth. That is the truth, John. You are so right. One of the questions I'd ask you, Caroline, I'm sorry if it's a bit rudimentary. Uh, your, your audience probably knows this, but ours doesn't since you're a new guest here. Um, what was the moment or moments that you realized that you had these prophetic gifts? Like, what was the impetus to do this channel? Oh, well, John, okay. Well, first of all, God's talked to me for years, and sometimes I didn't even know he was talking to me, like when I was younger and really had not come to know the Lord like I do now, but I can look back on it, and he was speaking to me back then, but not not like this. This is different. So I was invited to a conference, a weekend worship conference in my community, back in March. Okay. Now God was already talking to me and I was journaling things. He was saying personal things. And Donna Rigney came to the conference and she came to a church that they don't have a hundred people at this church. And it's not my church, but a friend invited me and I prayed all week on my knees. Father, if you have a word for me, let Donna share it with me. And I met her and she didn't have a word for me, but she did have a word for me. So she taught that Saturday how to hear from God. And she said, if you want to hear from God, he wants to talk to you. So he wants to talk to everybody. And she said, the big thing is spend some time praising Jesus, exalt Jesus, and then have your pen and pen paper ready and be still and know God and wait so I thought well okay I'm gonna try it well I went home and I came home and as soon as I could get everybody where I had some private time that I did exactly what she said it is so simple God makes everything simple and so he started giving me messages that are pretty long and I knew when he gave me a message that he wanted me to, to make it public. So yes, I'm fairly new at this as far as getting these types of messages from God. Mm -hmm. But see, Donna Rigney came and she did have a message for me. And that was the message on how I was to hear from God. And it's totally changed my prayer life with him because, you know, John, like most people, I used to do all the talking and I wouldn't let him do any of the talking. <laughs> if he wanted to tell me something he usually had to interrupt me yeah so that's what how i started hearing from god and i would encourage everybody to just do that and he will talk to you and and if you want to know something specific ask him the question mm -hmm. ask him because he will give you the answer it may not come out the way you think it will but he will talk to you about anything you want to know, because remember, he's God. He knows everything. And he loves you so much. And he wants you to want to hear from him. So, yes, yeah. that's how it happened. Well, thanks for sharing that, that testimony. Now, I completely identify and resonate with what you're saying, because I, as I told you offline, I, I spend every day in the morning early in what I call affectionately the field, just walking with him. And I've been challenged with leaving space in between the discussion. It's, it's shifted more from, for me from prayer request to gratitude. I find the more grateful we are in acknowledging the big and little things that he does, yes. things just kind of have a way of germinating from there. But uh, to your point, one of the three questions I've been asking, which are, are simple but difficult questions because we may not always want to hear the answer, is right. how are you doing today, God? Because he has feelings like we do, right? What can I do for you to move the kingdom forward? What do you need, right? And the hard one, what's your opinion of me? Because that can be a little, you know, daunting because he sees it all, like you said, the end from the beginning. But we have to remember he's not like us. You know, he's so much more gracious and patient and long-suffering. And he did that so that we would give it to other people. It's like yes. the ultimate pay it for, if you will. Yes, well, and I can tell you, you know, and you know, I had a personal word for you that I shared with you already, and I'm, um, 
he's ta he talks to me personally and he talks to me for uh to share with people but so i have two separate journals going but there's been a few times that he's kind of given me a spanking um <laughs> so but he's always it's always very loving the way he's done it yeah. and because one thing he told me was recently maybe a few months ago that i needed to watch my mouth because if I didn't clean it, if I, and it wasn't that I'm saying bad words, it was kind of like, sometimes I use some adjectives when I refer to some people and um, maybe some people like in the government or some family members or something, I might just refer to them in a certain way. And he told me that I needed to quit doing that because if I could, if he, if I didn't have my mouth straight, he couldn't use my mouth. But then, see, on the front end of that, he, he gave me this really loving message. And then on the back end, he gave me a very loving message, too. So he will sometimes tell you something you didn't want to hear. But at the same time, he does it in love. And it's for you to grow and to, to move closer to him and to be able to do what he's called you to do, your destiny. So don't be afraid to talk to him because he's he's not going to he's not going to really make it to the point you can't handle it. He would never do that. He 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 is, he is a loving loving father and he will talk to you with love about any subject. Absolutely and and, and to your point Carolyn I've learned in in maturing with my walk over the the years with the Lord like I'm sure much like yourself is I've learned to embrace the correction because it's it's like you with your son, you him growing up, you corrected him because you loved him. You wanted to protect him. It wasn't, it's like Jeremiah 29, 11, right? You have yeah. great plans not to harm him, to prosper him, to give him a hope in a future. And God right. is, wants to do it with us. So what better hands could we be in, right? And yeah. I've also learned to embrace keeping short accounts with him. That's something our pastor at church talks about many, many times. And I've really personalized that because it's like, as we're repenting often and meaning it, it's it's keeping us it's keeping us on a very focused path so we don't get distracted in the sidebars yes i agree i agree yes um one of the other things i wanted to ask you i have like three other main topics for today if you don't mind real quick is um switching off financial for a moment the geopolitical side we obviously have an election coming up we all know and there are many christians who have i've seen it in some of my comments and even some of yours and in other channels for that matter, but collectively there are some Christians who are at different faith points in their life and that's fine. Having trepidations about the election. I'm not concerned about it so much. And I try to keep my audience calm. So they're not either. And I'm, I'm sure you do the same, but you had written a message about the upcoming election here, something to do with uh, Kamala Harris and uh, what God was showing you about that. And, and president Trump, um, would you mind expanding on that a little bit, please? Um, let's see, okay, let me see that, that would be, um, let me see, um, I'm looking for the date. I think, I think it, it was um, July 18th, if, what you sent me the notes there at the end. Okay. Okay. That helps. Yes. Okay. Let me see. No, it, we read that one. I think it's July 22nd. Um, let's see. No, I don't have the whole thing about Kamala in that so I can tell you what he's told me about her off the top of my head sure well he's told me that she will be gone and she will be gone soon and she will be gone as in gone gone now that is kind of scary when mm. you think about it so I'm not sure where she's going if she's going back where she came from or where she's going or, but that was what he has told me. And he told me that Trump and Vance will lead the country. Now, he also told me in another word that he did not need one man or an election for him to do what he is going to do in the earth. So I can't answer the question about the election. I know that some people are saying we'll never have one and others are really concerned and they're worried about what the media hype is right now. I right. can't answer that. 
He hasn't told me that. And he, he told me the other day, he's not going to tell me everything because when he tells me everything, then the enemy knows everything. Mm -hmm. And he can't put his whole he can't put the whole puzzle together for any one prophet to put out because once he does, the enemy knows I felt the Holy spirit again, exactly what is going to happen. Mm. So as far as the election goes, I can't tell you, but he has told me Trump and Vance will lead the country. Now I have my thoughts on what's going to happen, but I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure. I wish I could absolutely say, thus saith the Lord, but Honestly, John, I'm going to tell you the truth, uh, you know, but he says she will be gone. So. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I could give you three options of how she'll be gone. And one of them would might would be Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. or maybe she's just going to go back where she came from, which is California, I believe. And then the other one is she's gone permanently. So I don't know. Right. To be continued. Yes, we shall stay tuned and see. Well, I mean, a true prophet, like you said, um, wouldn't use God's name if they weren't 100% certain anyway. And and there's the difference between your natural mind and your spiritual mind. I think you know that pretty well. Right. Yes. <clears throat> and I don't want to start putting things out there and saying, this is going to happen. And he hasn't told me. I would never want to do that because mm -hmm. honestly, this is not an easy thing to do. No. And you and it, you come to the table with this with fear, uh, some fear of the father, because I don't want to say anything wrong. I, and I, I sure do not want to displease him. It's one thing if people get mad at you on a YouTube channel or something and say an ugly comment to you, that's different. But I do not want to offend the father and do anything wrong. Right. His word is what matters most. A hundred percent. Yes. Um, now. Now, you may not may or may not know this, and your audience probably wouldn't know this, but on our channel, we don't, we're very big proponents on the financial side. We don't do dates and rates. We look at puzzle pieces, timelines, and of course, prophetic events, which yes. very apropos with you here. That being said, um, not asking for dates or anything like that, but um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a prophet named Rosalind Solomon. I don't know if you've heard no. of her. She's no. very good. Um, she's She's been accurate in a lot of things in the past and present. And I noticed on, I just really wanted to kind of bounce what she said off of you to see if anything the Holy Spirit might be showing you. Her contention was from the Holy Spirit that Yahweh showed her that this is on, I th think it's like three or four days ago now, something like that. Mm -hmm. She had said Yahweh showed her that the last four months of this year are going to look infinitely better than the first eight months of this year. And I was just wondering how that resonated with you. Yes, I do believe that because he keeps telling me September that he something critical that there's going to be a critical event in September so the critical event that for us to fear not because some people are going to be in fear and trembling and other people are going to be celebrating his precious children are going to be celebrating so September October November December that's the last four months of the year so yes I would be in agreement with that based on what he's told me. Right. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, another question I want to ask you, if you don't mind, we talked about this offline and, and prior to the broadcast. Uh, I had asked you, and you were gracious enough to do this, uh, I think a week and a half ago when we talked, uh, if you could take it to the Lord in regards to what we talk about here quite a bit, things that you had no idea what I was talking about. So that was good because then it was coming more germane from him. And that is, um, we have been teaching our audience for some time that the wealth transfer is eight levels deep. By that, we mean foreign currencies, certain exotic bonds, certain cryptos, uh, obviously precious metals, and then land, water resources, certain oil stocks, not the traditional ones, uh, and so forth. But that this wealth transfer is actually eight levels deep over a prolonged period of time. It's been our contention, uh, Carolyn, that the well transfer starts this year and goes all the way into 2027, 2028, roughly thereabouts, where it will extenuate. And so I asked you if you could take it to the Lord in regards to 
Uh, and again, my audience knows this, and, and I don't know which parts of your audience do or don't, so forgive me, folks, but um, there is a currency that's widely regarded in this as the uh, benchmark or the grand opening of things called the Iraqi dinar, which goes back to Mesopotamia, the land of milk and honey, the original birthplace, birthplace of Christ. And so it just makes sense that that land would be prospered again. So that's one, uh, the Vietnamese dong in Vietnam. And the reason is because they are heavily backed by precious metals and many, many other things, oil and phosphorus and such. Uh, and then, of course, the nation of Zimbabwe, I asked you about, which is completely repletely laden with gold, probably arguably has the most amount of gold throughout the world. What's interesting, Carolyn, is if you don't already know, next Friday, they have a very important uh, countrywide election where Nelson Chamisa, who is a very holy sought out Christian, um, he's considered the people's president, like President Trump here, is going up for election and has vowed that once he wins, like President Trump has been saying, he's going to restore the freedom and remove the corruption and restore the gold and all of its different mechanisms, like Zimbabwe bonds, to the people. Right. And so I asked you to take it to the Lord and see if maybe by chance he might have shown you anything. Um, has he shown you anything on this? Well, he gave me a word. I, I can't say it's very specific regarding each of those. And, you know, I will go back to him and talk to him about all of that uh, later on. But I can give you the word. And he talked to me last night. This is from last evening. I have to read my notes for this. He said, the gold and the silver is mine. The currencies around the world will rise that are backed by the gold standard. Those not backed will be realigned for the gold standard, and this will impact the wealth, the transfer of wealth. Keep your eyes on me as I am moving and shaking the economic systems. It is not time for the one global currency. It is coming in the future, but not at this time. And that was all he talked to me. So, John, I promise you I will spend some time talking to him about these different topics. And uh, because honestly, I don't know about these mm -hmm. and I'm not as educated as your audience is, but um, mm. I will. I will do that. Appreciate it. And I want to be clear for your audience specifically to know that the point of this isn't to be um, about, you know, greed or avariciousness like, oh, you know, right. it's 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 so that God's people specifically can prepare for what's coming and take the necessary steps to be a blessing. If we know what's coming ahead, we can prepare for it and be more you know, peaceable about it as opposed to being in trepidation. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great point. So I agree. I just wanted to be clear about that for those of your audience who are not familiar with what we do here. Um, okay, so we talked about just going through my mental checklist, we talked about some of these other things. Is there anything, um, you know, ancillary that the Lord has shown you, or is that pretty much what you got at this point? Um, well, let me go back and just, I just think this was very good that he gave me, and this is back April 24th, <clears throat> and the father said, the enslavement of my people through taxation the money system and much more is going to change and you will be free, free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Your freedom will be like a dream come true and you will know ooh, that only the great God Jehovah could have made this possible. This is a problem. This has been a problem from long ago and men of ambition, power, and greed have exploited my systems and my kingdom of government. And he said, no more. I say no more because the kingdom of God, his, he, he, is, he bases finances on the gold standard, on gold and silver, and he said that men exploited us, and you, I know you've educated everyone about that, and that he is not going to tolerate what people have done through, to us. For example, you know, my house, I paid taxes when I bought the house. I pay taxes every year on the house. 
whether I sell it or, or anything, I just keep paying tax and tax and tax. And he said, no more, because this is enslavement of all of us. And so we all have to work two or three jobs to pay for everything these days. And he said, no more. Yeah, absolutely. And that falls right in line with Masari. You've heard President Trump already giving you hints about uh, yes. hey, no more taxes on tips, no more income tax. I'll yes. give your audience a bit of a hint. He's already done it because during 2020, he baked the Federal Reserve into the Treasury. And mm -hmm. I've shown documents, I can show it to you offline, whereby um, I've had to deal with the Internal Revenue Service that used to call themselves the IRS. I've had to deal with them the last couple of years on a, a pre-existing business I had five years ago that they were trying to illegally collect monies on. And I challenged them and, and was able to be successful by the grace of God. Uh, where you can see on their letterhead, their, their language has changed completely. Even the seal has changed from the Federal Reserve to the Treasury. So there are clear and present signs that he's, he's putting out comms to the whole of society, does not know what our audience has been privy to. Uh, right. This taxation has been uh, illegal. You can't, the Bible says you, you can't tax a man by the sweat of his or her brow. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been done illegally. It's all by consent, right? And yeah. so- that's going to be taken out. Uh, there is a way to lawfully avoid property taxes. We, um, if your audience is interested on our channel, we had a couple of gentlemen that expounded greatly on common law trusts, which mm -hmm. are going back to the Bible, um, whereby you can, let's say, buy this new property, have a common law trust, and you register the deed in the trust. And you don't actually, there's no law that says, just like there's no law that says you have to pay taxes as an individual, there's no law that says, you have to register a deed with the county. Mm -hmm. People just do it because they're accustomed to doing it. They've been right. brainwashed to believe that's what you do. So nobody ever asked the question, but there's going to be, like you said, no more, no more enslavement. So Nasara has so many important uh, implications, right? In addition to that, Carolyn, when people have more money in their pocket, guess what they can do? They can save, they can invest, they can, uh, they can contribute to the GDP of society. That also means people, when houses are 90% less, they can afford it within their paycheck. They can do what they love instead of what they have to do. That also right. means the nuclear family with man at the center as the leader, the, yeah. the wife can be at home doing whatever she loves to do while taking care of the guardians, if that's applicable. So you don't have to have two incomes and you know somebody else raising your kids and what that looks like. So there's right. so many compounding effects that God is going to be, I believe he's also going to be restoring Carolyn godly marriages and godly guardians. He's going to be making men to be what men are supposed to do and women, what they're supposed to do again. And your strength is in your feminine, your feminine, femininity, not your feminism, right? Cause Satan's always twisting. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. And feminism, I think is what has driven a lot of the evil agendas that, you know, yeah. that, but the father has told me that, the glory is coming. And when the glory hits this earth, then the darkness is going to fade. It's kind of like, you know, you turn on the light, the darkness goes away. Ooh, God's glory comes to the earth. Mm -hmm. Then the darkness is going to fade. And so all of these things that you're talking about, we're going to see people who come to know the Lord, that get filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to see men rise up and become the spiritual leaders of their home because they're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They're going to be seeking God. They're going to be spending time with God. And all of this is a big, big plan that God is doing for his son, Jesus, and for his children that he loves so much. Yeah. It's beautiful. It really yes. is. It's biblical. It's great. It's so liberating. Um, one other thing I just wanted to add that you had said earlier that the Lord showed you about in regards to um, no one world currency as of right now. And, right. Uh, and just to back you up on that again, Prophet Solomon had also said, uh, just for a reference point of confirmation, she had said that Yahweh showed her that Agenda 25 and Agenda 2030, which wholly comprises of that one world currency and uh, mm -hmm. the enslavement has been quashed. So I do believe that God is reversing time and, and giving us back that that time to to do what we need to do before, you know, his inevitable return. Yes, because, you know, at the end of the day, he cares about that lost family member you have. And 
it's going to and it, the wealth transference is is about the lost it mm -hmm. is about the people that he does not want to perish so it, it's just going to be a glorious day we, we're getting ready to see the most beautiful days of our life and it is right he says it is time now is what he has told me he was saying before it was on top of us now he says it is time so and he and he keeps saying september to me so i'm believing john i'm just believing believe yeah. with me i stand in agreement with you sister um one last question before we we end it for today because we'd love to have you back obviously if you would indulge us oh thank um, you so much yes i would love to come back it's, it's an honor it, because very appropriate with what you said with september it just makes sense on so many levels um there are like myself there are people here who have been waiting for their godly spouse there have been people who've been waiting to have their guardians slash children um that's something god has shown me as well the distinct they're his kids and we're just guardians that was that was yeah. one i had to wrestle with a little bit um but there are people who have been waiting their turn patiently uh, to get married and have guardians to do it right, who are not trying to immerse themselves in a, you know, dating app world and chasing it down and trying to do it ahead of God. Uh, what encouraging word can you give some of those folks? Well, I would tell you, um, now we adopted an orphan when, I, and the adoption was final when I was 46. The Lord had given us, given me a word several years before, and he said, and I will perfect that which concerneth you. And I thought it was probably about paying a bill or something like that. But then later I realized that it was about me being a mother. And he, you know, I waited all these years until I was 46 to become a mother. And we adopted our son. He was nine months old when he came home. So I would tell you, to wait on the Lord. He orchestrated a bunch of events. Tell him the desires of your heart. He wants you to pour out what you want and be detailed and specific. If you have, if you are desiring your spouse, tell him the type of person you would like to be with. If you want them to be tall and, and brown hair, whatever you want, he wants to do that and he will, and he will set it all up and let him do it. Don't go knocking on doors because I've found when he brings the people and the events in my life from him, it's always better than if I was knocking people down to try to get something. And he totally did that in my life with our son. He brought my husband into my life when I was not looking for anyone. And, and then I could give you a whole bunch of things that he has done. But every time I've been just like applying for jobs or doing this or doing that and just beating doors down, it'd be crickets. Mm. Now, let God do it. But go to him and talk to him about it. And he will perfect that which concerns you too. He will. Oh, he will. He's faithful. Hallelujah to that, sister. Yes, yes. Well, I think this is a good place to start for now. To stop for now, and we'll pick this up again, uh, you know, God willing, next month. Uh, okay. But as we always do, Carolyn, with our our esteemed guests like yourself, um, we'd like to give you the opportunity. Any last words you'd like to say to our audience, and where can people find out about your work? Okay. Um, well. First, I'd like to say, John, thank you so much for inviting me today, and I would be honored to come back. And um, we have a YouTube channel. It's called Declaring Your Destiny, and this is our logo, so you can easily find us, Declaring Your Destiny. And we are also on Rumble, Declaring Your Destiny, and we're trying to get a blog going. We're working on that right now so that we can post all the messages from God, but we haven't quite got that up yet. So that's where you can find us. We have an email. You can email myself at declaringyourdestiny1 at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Great. Thank you. Sure. Any, and again, any last thing, words you'd like to say to the audience, feel free. Well, just spend some time with God. And let him love on you because he loves you so much. Mm. And he's got great plans for you. And you're going to be amazed what he's getting ready to do. So just be excited and get, get have your cake ready to celebrate. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Well, Carol and Dennis, thank you, Ms. Uh, Carol and Dennis Prophet and uh, motivational speaker for God. We appreciate that. And we appreciate your time today and all of your information that God has shared with you. We look forward to having you on again next month and uh, have a great rest of your day. You too, John. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless.